right. We are at 2.05. So let's get going and people can come in as they do. Welcome to Train the Trainer Session 2. My name is Chris Nelson. I'm one of your District 60 Program Quality Directors and our Zoom Master today. And I'll hand things over to our panel moderator, Hin Loon. Thank you, Madam Program Quality Director, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Good afternoon and welcome to Club Officer Training Round 2, Train the Trainer Session. Quality clubs need well-trained club officers, and I thank you for your interest to ensure we all will have well-trained officers in our district. I'm Hinan Lee, I am District 60's Club Officer Training Co-Chair, and I'm delighted to be your moderator today. We have seasoned Toastmasters to share with us tips and tricks that allow us to run effective training sessions. And today we have Andrew Mertens, the 2019 District Champion of the Evaluation Contest, who teach us about logistics. Kenji Ferguson, the 2018-19 Division A Director, and my fellow Club Officer Training Co-Chair, who teach us about structure. J.D. Thomas, the 2014-15 District Club, uh, sorry, District Public Relations Officer, who teach us about resources. And Elton Brown, the 2015-16 District Director, who teach us about content. As mentioned before, our Zoom Master today will be Chris Nelson, our Program Quality Director. She will also be the timer for today to keep our event today running on time. And just so everyone know, just like the second presidential debate, Chris has access to the mute buttons. So be careful about that. The format today will be as follows. We will spend 30 to 38 minutes on the presentations from our panelists. And because this is not the first presidential debate, if you have any questions, I would ask that you leave your questions in the chat box during this segment. And after that, I will ask the panelists, uh, panelists questions collected in the chat box, as well as questions that may uh, that may cl clarify certain points in the presentations. This will take about 15 to 17 minutes. Then it will be your turn to ask your questions to your panelists. This will take about 20 to 24 minutes. And finally, I will finish off the session with some closing remarks. To ensure our event will run smoothly, I would ask that you mute yourself when you're not speaking. I would also ask that all speakers respect the timing signals from Chris. And with that, let the event begin. Andrew Mertens has been a Toastmaster for nine years, is a member of three clubs, and has held every role within the club. He has also held various district roles and has been a club officer trainer since 2014 and enjoys the challenge of having each participant learn something new, particularly when a participant considers themselves an expert in the role. Please join me in welcoming Andrew Mertens, who will talk about the logistics of a training session. Thank you for telling my fellow Toastmasters and fellow trainers, car trainers. As Hinlun mentioned, this is not the first presidential debate. Therefore, it's not going to be a repeat of round one. I will do a refresh of round one, but I'm going to describe again into some new material as well. So to, so to get into the refresh of round one, I am going to ask everyone that's attending today, all the participants, to help me out. So it's almost like a quiz. It's like a refresh of what we did you know, three months ago. So if you could get, if you could take yourself off mute, I want to first of all ask, you know, how did I define logistics in round one? And after I know you were here last week, so I may I may come to you, but I'm hoping the others can answer um, before you, you before you chime in. So how was how was logistics defined last time? Anybody? Bruce, please go ahead. Is it the technical aspects about how to do it? It's along those lines. It's along those lines. It's a planning and time taken to make sure that everybody has the information that they need during, before, and after a, an event, a meeting, a training session. And when I did the round one, I mentioned you know, those three timeframes, so the before, during, and after. And I had my three M's. Does anybody remember why three M's were? Anybody? You want to take a guess what my three M's were? My three M's were me. So me being the trainer, this would be you, me being the trainer. Do I have the material that I need? Do I understand the platform that I'm using? Do I have the right background? Do I have the right light? Is it something that's going to be compelling? 
there was the moderator, and I highly suggest that you don't try to do a training session or an event by yourself, depending on how many contest, how many participants there are. There could be questions that are coming up, there could be raised hands, etc. It's really important to be able to have a moderator that can sort of handle that, all that for you. And then there was the member. And when I talked about the members, this is, for instance, beforehand, you'd send out a survey because you want to find out from the members in terms of what are they interested in when it comes to training? What do they want to focus on? Particularly for round two, they've been in the position for six, you know, close to six months. They may have particular questions that they want to see answered within the training. It's important, for instance, and this is something that we've discovered with our Zoom meetings, make sure that they remind you of the fact that they actually have a training session coming up. So send out the invite, you know, resend the invite, you know, two days beforehand, even two hours beforehand. What we found that is for those, when you do remind them consistently, you get about a 25% higher uh, um, participation rate. 25% of the attendees will actually show up. They won't forget about it. So that's really important. And then make sure that you send out the material after the training session as well. You probably have handouts. You don't, you, you don't, be, you don't want them to be distracted by reading them you know, during the session, but afterwards, you know, send out those handouts. So those were the, the three ends. There was the me, the moderator, and the member. And it was the before, during, and after. What I want to do today is concentrate more on the during the session itself by going into some of the technicalities, the functionality of Zoom. Now, I've chosen Zoom because that's the platform that the majority of clubs are using. Last time I mentioned the polling feature, but I didn't really get into a lot of the functionality. And I'm sure now that we've been online for six, seven months, you probably are, you know, you're probably quite familiar with it, but I'm hoping to be able to show you some new stuff today. Arthur's going to be a little bit of a challenge because he was here last week, but I think I have a surprise mm -hmm. for Arthur as well. So I'm going to get closer to the camera here because I am going to start sharing various items and showing you various functionality. So one of the very first things is the virtual background. You can have a lot of fun with virtual with a virtual background. You can have a forest setting, for instance. And I saw somebody do this very effectively in a meeting that I attended you know, a couple of weeks ago. They were actually stood as far back as possible. So it looked like they were in the woods. And then when they were introduced, they came running towards the camera saying, ah, oh, just went for a walk in the woods. I'm really glad to be here. And then they continued. So have some fun with the virtual background. But did you know, and you probably do know, you can actually have videos loaded into your virtual background. So this is one that I loaded uh, earlier. And you can you know, have some fun with the, you know, it could be table topics, it could be a presentation can, you could do, you know, an introduction. So this one says, you know, welcome to logistics. So think about loading your know, videos and, and making the meetings fun. And it's really important to have fun meetings. We had the renewal period. I mean, the, 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 the not so great news is the fact that we lost about 25% of the membership, we've lost about 15% of the clubs. So we really want to make meetings as fun, as an interactive as possible, really get the logistics down sound, and you'll, you'll find that the attendance will, will maintain and increase. So we had the virtual background, but you know what else we have now? And this, and this is really important when it comes to making sure that you have the latest version of Zoom. We have video filters. How many people have played around with this, for instance? So if you want to put a pirate hat on, Woohoo! I can have a pirate hat on. And you can have these sort of fun meetings. I was in a meeting on Friday, yesterday, and it was a fun hat meeting. And so I just chose one of the virtual backgrounds, put my pirate hat on, and I had that for the entire meeting. Now, just out of curiosity, how many people can actually put a pirate hat on or use some of the video filters? So just have a, have a go with that, just, just very quickly, because I want to understand, you know, how up to date is your Zoom? So I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing Chris has got a party hat on. So is Him Loon. This is excellent. And uh, I, yeah, you know, excellent. And if you find that you don't have this, and this is when you go to the, the, the video, you know, stop video, this choose virtual background, you should be able to see a tab that says video filters. If you don't see it, it means that you don't have the latest version of Zoom. But I'll show you how to get the latest version of Zoom, because again, it's something that, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just more fun. With within the entire meeting. Another aspect that I find quite helpful, and you can do that, you can, you can let the officers know this in terms of, you know, even like the VP of Ed, because I'm the VP of Ed of a club, I like to share and I like to have people sign up for various roles. And I, what I do is I bring up a sign up registration sheet for the next meeting. And I find this really helpful because sometimes you know, we're missing quite a number of roles. And I ask people, you know, just use through annotation. And again, that's, you know, have a look at your annotation skills. 
And so without me telling how to do it, try to annotate and using text, type in your name against one of these roles. And I find this very effective as VP or bed. I see that JD is there, JD Thomas has got it. I find this very effective because I will get a full roster for the next meeting by simply having a sign up sheet at the end of the meeting itself. And I can use this, you know, one meeting in advance, two meetings in advance. So have a, have a go. And, and if it's okay, if you don't know how to use annotation, but it's something for you to, to play with and to discover and to have some fun with as well. Because again, it's all around understanding the functionality and the, and the, tech, you know, the technology that we have at hand. There are other things that you can be sharing as well. I've seen some very innovative PowerPoint slides that have been put together. And I wanna show you something that I put together just for, for some fun. And this is around pathways. We're club officers, we have to understand pathways, we have to encourage it. And I like to do something called the Jeopardy, the Pathways edition. And hopefully you can even hear the sounds, you got the Pathways music there. And let's move on to, let's have a game. Let's have a round right now. Now, because I'm sharing, I don't get to see everybody, but who would like to volunteer and for instance, you know, choose a number? Um, Bruce, I can see you. Would you like to go for one of the categories there? Base camp manager for 200, please. Base camp manager for 200. Let's click on that. These help you understand how your members are progressing. So that's the answer. So what's the question? And it's okay, it's, it's uh, no, no, no pressure. There's, there's, there's no real money at hand, <laughs> on hand here, but I have the answer here. And the answer is what a member progress dashboards. And this, at this point allows me then to go and explore. I can come out, I can go into TI and I can go into pathways and I can show where the, the dashboards are so that you know the VP of Vets, secretary, president can have a look to see how the members are doing. And then I can just simply go back home and then we can choose another one. Who else would like to participate? Let me call upon somebody. Who can I call upon? David, what would you like to choose? Um, how about uh, general? General? For, how, for what? Uh, maybe $200. 200, okay. My account. So what's the question to my account? Hmm. My account. And and no worries again. I mean this again, this is this is meant to be fun, educational. <laughs> Where can I log? Where can I log meeting roles? Oh so this is an opportunity. So when you finish level three, for instance, there are three roles you have to complete before you can move on to level four. You can go and log the roles there, VP of Ed, the base camp manager can see where they are. Again, there's let's explore button, now it can go out into TI into pathways, or I can simply go back home. So think about having some of this fun. When it, when it comes to the meetings and, and letting the, the club officers know that all these things exist. And depending on the role that they have, it, it might be very helpful when it comes to these types of, of documents to share. I do want to share something else. And this is around, again, new functionality within Zoom. And this is why it's important to be able to make sure that you have the latest version of Zoom installed on your device. Before, there used to be two options for breakout rooms. You can assign automatically, or you can sign manually. Now they've added, let participants choose. And this is really cool because what we could have done, for instance, for this session at the end, if people had some questions still, is we could have created four breakout rooms, logistics, structure, resources, and content. And then the participants can say, hey, I've got more questions around content. Let me go into that breakout room and we'll have a discussion with Elton. I suspect this is being used at the club officer TLI training in November because I know it's been set up such that people are going to break out rooms for the various educational roles, but it's gonna be really important that everybody has up-to-date Zoom on the device, otherwise they won't be able to see this option. So something else is to, you know, to consider. And I mentioned before, you know, where do you go and check for updates? Well, you check out for updates here and you can see the uh, circle did, I put the arrow there, but this when you sign out, sign in, you know, this, this is the opportunity and then it'll automatically update. Think about doing video. 
So, and this is where I'm hoping Arthur will not have seen this, something new this time around, but have some fun with the video. And again, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear this. Hello. Oh, there you are. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting ready for my next Toastmasters Club meeting. Toastmasters? Why did I join Toastmasters? Well, for years, I've had a lot I've wanted to say, but I didn't know how. I literally felt as if I'd been left out in the cold. And then I discovered the Toastmasters manual. And that's when a door opened. Wonderful for the VP of for PR, VP of membership. I mean, these are all different things that you can do with the functionality that we have within our online platforms. I see the red, I've reached my time. I'm now gonna turn this back over to Hinloon, but if you have any questions, we do have time at the end of the meeting to go into this. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I'm particularly impressed by your new content. You you certainly have uh, brought a lot of new content out of the, uh, for, than from those we, we have seen from last week. So let me go to the second speaker, uh, Kenji Ferguson. So Kenji has been the Toastmaster since 2015, is currently a member of three clubs and has served in many club executive roles, including president, VP education and treasurer, as well as being a past division director. During the Pathways rollout, Kenji was a Pathways guy and has continued since then, giving Pathways training sessions to clubs. Kenji has also organized and delivered several club officer trainings, as well as club workshops. Professionally, Kenji is a project manager with the engineering firm AECOM, working in the building engineering group, where he leads multidisciplinary teams to complete designs for the renovation and upgrade of transit, fa transit facilities. Please join me in welcoming Kenji Ferguson, who will discuss the structure of a training session. Thank you, Hin Lun. Well, fellow Toastmasters and fellow club officer trainers. I'm gonna start with a story that goes back to December of 2015, about six months after I joined Toastmasters. Our club's VP education had decided he was going to step down and eventually focus more on his, his work and other hobbies in, in life. And when he stepped down, an election was called and they asked, who's gonna be the VP of education? And he pointed to me and said, oh, you, you look interested, you should do it. And there I was thrust into my first experience in club officer, being a club officer. Now that would have, now having started my role in December, that would have meant my first training was in round two. And the, the, re, the reason I bring this up is one, show that people come into club, into club officer roles at all sorts of experience levels. They could be just starting, they could have been there for years. And to point out that there are clubs that start, and there are officers that start in, in the round two period whether it's because someone stepped down, whether it's because they only do it for a six month term, those are things you have to be aware of. Now, the main, the main thing I wanted to get across in my, in my presentation today is that agendas are important in round two, just as much as they are in round one, but the focus is different. Because there is this wide variety of experiences and, and clubs out there, there's also this, there's also a need to be very adaptable with what is going on there. So there is a structure and it's important to prepare for that, but it's also important to leave room for the adapt, the adaptability. So the main points I want to cover will show up in the background behind me. The agenda, why is the agenda important? How can we customize it? How do we allow for the right duration of training? And how do we stimulate discussion with scenario questions? So I'll, I'll start with the agendas because that's the cornerstone of the whole idea of a structured training. An agenda is your plan for how the, how the, how the, the session is structured. 
like any like a Toastmasters meeting, you always have an agenda to say this is what you're going to do when. This is when you'll do table topics. This is when you'll do your speeches. This is when you'll do your evaluations. A training session is much the same. Even if you don't know exactly who's going to be there and what you're going to talk about, it's important to, to have a plan for what you're going to cover when. You might not get to, you might be throwing a few curveballs during the training, but it's still important to make sure you can cover the bases you wanted to have covered. Especially, especially if there are new, newer people and you need to go over the basics a little bit as well. So that, that's where um, knowing your participants beforehand have, is important as well. In the first, in the round one of this training, I know Andrew covered extensively doing surveys of, of, the, of the training participants before the training starts. That's still important here. And even, even with or without that, it would, it's also beneficial to set aside time at the beginning for introductions. Again, that, that in my experience is a place where things have sometimes gone over time or taken too long. So it's important to have an expectation for how long that's going to take. And then getting into the club demographic. It's important to have the, the sections there. You can adjust the timings based on who's there and who's not. So leaving time to cover the basics, leaving time for Q&A, for open discussion, and discussions of different types of clubs. I know a lot of officers tend to leave round two trainings to be dominated by open discussion, which in the right circumstances works well, but can leave behind newer club officers if that's what happens. So again, it's important to have these topics there, and even, even if there's ones that you might not necessarily cover if they're not needed, they're good to have there for the next training. So customization, this is where you're the plan you have beforehand is adapted to fit the club demographics. As I mentioned, there's open discussion, there's, there's demonstration of the basics, there's sharing your own experiences and stories. All of those are important to a good training and planning the time required for those is, is important. Often you'll have have participants who have a lot of experience sometimes and often more than yourself as a trainer. If you've allowed time for open discussion, that's a great way to engage these people and to have them share their experiences. It's, it's enriching for everybody to be able to hear different perspectives and, and get the benefit of some of that experience. You can plan for things like pathways. That's a, that's a topic that comes up especially during President, VP Education, and Secretary training. So again, something that if discussion turns somewhere else, you might forget to come back to it. It's good to have the agenda provided ahead of time so you can set those expectations. If people want to know about pathways, they'll focus on that. And they can pick out things out of the agenda that they might want you to talk more about. In terms of session duration, usually they're one hour. We have recommended that for again, those base camp manager roles, president, VP education and secretary that these, these could be one hour and a half. And that's set up ahead of time by the division director organizing the training and the Zoom master. But the benefit of that is that you can cover pathways, you can cover club issues. And those three roles especially are also very, are very involved in the running of the club in terms of scheduling, dealing with executive business and club business. So there, there's a lot to talk about in those three roles and having a 90 minute session is definitely to the benefit of everyone involved. Sharing email addresses. Again, some, something you might forget to do at the end, but the agenda is a good, is a good prompt for that. It's a good place to include. Good prompt to remind you, if you collect these email addresses, you can use this to share information after the meeting as well. Another thing you can include on these agendas is resources. And there's some examples of that. I don't have time to go through all of them now, but if you look at the Google Drive link that was shared at the beginning, there are a number of sample club officer training agendas, some prepared by um, distinguished Toastmaster Karim Premji and some prepared by myself for round two club officer training sessions. So there's a lot, there's examples there you can work off of, but in general, the format is the, is the same, or the intention is the same to make sure you've covered all of the key points of a club officer training 
and leaving enough flexibility to customize it to your particular demographics. Scenario questions feature quite heavily, especially in mind, because they're a great way to stimulate discussion. There are a few sources of those. Some of those can be from the officers themselves or past trainings you've done where there's questions they might have. They could also be things you've had from your experience, or they could be from the club officer, officer's manual. The club leadership handbook actually has a few scenarios, and I try to make sure I include those as well. If they're relevant to the officers present, we can talk about them more. If they're not, we can move on to questions that they might have. So that concludes my presentation on structure. Hopefully, with the right planning, you can set, a, you can set up an agenda that covers what you want it to while leaving enough room to customize for the officers and different levels of experience in there. There's one more thing I did wanna cover and it's in the resources in the Google Drive. There's a club, there's a corporate club panel discussion recording in there. So corporate clubs have often have different issues from regular clubs. So if you are training and some of your members are in corporate clubs, it's important, it would be good to have that shared as well. And on that note, I will turn things over to Hin Lun and we can move on to the next portion of the training. Thank you, Kenji, for your excellent information. And thank you for sharing about how you got into your very first club officer role. I mean, just like you, uh, surprisingly, my very first club officer role was also the VP education role. And it was also the result of someone stepping down. So there are so many similarities in our Toastmasters experience. Thank you for sharing that. So now we're going to move on to our next speaker, JD. So JD Thomas is the Chief Communications Officer for Jade Strategic Relations, a Durham-based PR firm. JD has been a member of Ajax Pickering Toastmasters Club since 2010. He is the current president and has twice been a club's VP Public Relations. JD was a 2013 District 60 Public List of the Year and a District's Public Relations Officer in 2014-15. He has led the club officer training more than 40 times and has done extensive work with struggling clubs. Please join me in welcoming JD Thomas, who will talk about resources available for facilitating a training session. Thank you, Hinlun, and thank you everybody for being here. One of the key things I have said throughout the years with Toastmasters is, as long as you have a club that has a couple of, two to three members that really want things to succeed, you'll do well as a club. And if you have uh, people helping, like yourselves, helping do the club officer training, that is really key because training really doesn't make a difference. And as the best that you can be equipped to go in to do these things, you volunteered to do this, so thank you, and you're here to help improve yourself. It's the best thing that we can ask for is as far as making sure that clubs and the district are successful. So thank you. That being said, I've... Uh, good number of experiences was said that uh, and doing club officer training and as Kenji had mentioned and, and it really is a very different beast in club officer training the part two yes you still have the variance and the variances between experience of the members that are there but the difference with the two part two is just as Kenji and Hinlun I also started off in the midway through a year and so it became a it, it, you get people with that are attending that have a lot less experience, even just with Toastmasters themselves. They've been members for a very short period of time and they don't know how to progress. But of course, we're here to help people learn. And this is what we're about. And having great resources is an awesome opportunity to allow club officers to understand what is available to them, allow them to be independent in managing their, their, their daily work within the club. I'm going to share a few of the resources that are that are that I have found key. But as was said, because we have this varied group of experience within the year, myself, the second round, I leave the second half of the agenda to open discussions. And this way you can ask questions, find out from the, the attendees what is it that they require because there is some foundational information that is there and you it's relatable from first to second session it is hey let's rehash what your role is let's rehash what you're supposed to do because maybe things got a little wonky in your and your maybe you didn't have a lot of time to commit to the role maybe some things with the club were a little weird 
we're all virtual now, so this whole experience is very difficult to navigate. And so just having that reset, having the first half staying the structure and starting off with, hey, here's what you're here for. Here's some of the basics that you might be interested in. And starting with that, I always recommend lead off with the club leadership handbook. Every club executive member should know this. They should have this down. And it really does help because every single role that is in a club executive is in here. What to do, how to do it. Of course, every club is going to be different and there's going to be differences in them. But having this base knowledge really does give the, the basic solids of the role for every single role knowing what's expected of them, knowing how to complete it. And then there's the nuances that is their own club. A couple of years back when I was the president of my club, I got the club to vote on installing a new club executive officer, the club mentorship chair. And that person doesn't get credit for doing the roles, but they still I go through and do training with them every year to help them understand how to become an effective a mentor chair. And it's really important to have some guidance to each of the roles so that they know what to do. The next, every, as you're going in to do your club officer training, every single role has this club officer training book for the each different roles. I do the VP of PR all the time, and I find it great to go back to this resource and find out what kind of things do I do for this club officer training role. And there's Lots of great information in here. There's also links to other resources which you can use for training the club officers. And they're really easy. As you can see, it's not a lot of packed information, but a lot of really good information that'll help you become more effective as a trainer. Of course, every different role has a, has its own leadership book and you can learn how to do the roles. And again, Vice President of Public Relations, I'm a PR guy. And there's another book here that helps people understand what it is about PR. And there's, there's a lot of other resources. We're going to get to them for different roles. But having these things as the basic foundation of what you're providing as a club officer trainer, this is going to help you going forward. Key things that are always helpful. This is a slightly older Pathways infographic. A lot of people are having problems with Pathways. If you're doing the VP of Education or even the President's role, it is about Pathways. We are about the training. The, the, we're helping people learn how to communicate through this program. So understanding it is your key resource. There's a newer one that discusses the paths and the leadership dynamic and how each one of these things, the effective coach, each of these different pathways are in here and it describes how those paths are. So if you're doing the VP of education role, having this type of thing behind you, providing it to those in the train, getting the training allows them for greater adoption of the, the, the basics and standards that we have as a, as a district and as a Toastmasters International. Of course, manuals, where do you get them from? We get them from TI's, well, actually, we get them from TI's website, but the websites are huge. And District 60, I'll start with this actually before we get into TI. If you're not familiar with the, T, the District 60 website, get familiar with it. There's amazing things that'll help for every different part of your uh, executive, whether it be from president down to secretary, there's a lot of key quality information. And letting other members know, not just that the fact that we have stuff for the program pathways and our table topics, but there are also workshops and other opportunities to learn to learn. And this right here is our district 60 calendar. It's full it is amazing. And there's a lot of different opportunities for you to see what is available to you, not just as a, as executive and as a officer trainer, but as a member. So getting members interested and getting them with you, knowing that there's more very important. Now, understanding where to get re these resources is very important. And I have had roles in corporate life where I have had man uh, been a manager of teams and I tried to encourage them to get involved and understand where to get information. And I'd scavenger hunts and I would give points for, for who, those who participated who, and even little awards for those who could find particular documents or find something from a document. And so they were better able to navigate. 
under allowing and being virtual, this will allow you to help your the attendees of your training to go and understand, see where you're looking and see where to find the information. Best, of course, we've got the resources. Uh, there's the resource library, which is coming up. There's the leadership central key, absolutely key for club officers to understand what is available to them. I learned something new today while going through and having, and I just going through it today, helping my club doing what I needed to do. I found some key functionality, which allowed me to become a better club, club officer. So go, getting in here, understanding what is available to you, very important. Bear with me one second here. There we go. Stop it. The bar keeps showing up. There we go. All right. So the resources. There's an awesome, awesome, and the word awesome is you know to inspire to inspire awe. And this is really is the amount of information, the amount of resources at your fingertips are here. Brand manual, very key for the VP of PR. Club leadership handbook, especially the president, but the VP of membership, VP of education should know these things off by heart. District leadership handbook. It's good to know not just where you are as far as a club executive, but what's above you, what's going on. There are so many different resources here, video libraries, magazines, leadership articles. Toastmasters is about learning and we have it there. And of course, pathways. Please, 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 every club officer trainer, get your members, get the members at your, your functions to look at pathways, even if they're not a, a even if they're not the VP of education, every single one of them should know how to navigate pathways, getting them to look at it. But it's a resource that every single one of them can use. And by the way, YouTube even another great resource for members. There's a lot of key information here in the YouTube channel and for, for club contests, for, uh, for different executive roles, for different asp aspects of the Toastmasters experience. It's all there. I highly recommend understanding, seeing that it's there, utilizing it to the best of your abilities. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. We, there are lots of resources available and way more than I can get into now. And I'm gonna now pass the meeting back to Hinlun. Thank you. Wow, thank you, JD, for the variety of resources you have presented. You have actually presented way more resources than last week. So I think we we have, I'm, so I wanna thank all the panelists for doing their best to actually update their sessions even from last week. Okay, so our next session, so our next speaker will be Alton. Uh, so Alton Alton Brown has been a Toastmaster since 2009. Alton loves to capture images and cooking. Alton will talk about ways to get your audience tuned into you before the meeting starts and how to help clubs determine what can be strengthened. Please join me in welcoming Alton Brown, who will discuss the content of a training session. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. You know, uh, uh, just within the past few minutes, we've heard from Kenji talking about having proper structure, and then Thomas talking about myriads of information. It's kind of difficult to determine, well, I mean, you have so much information all over the place. What, how in the world do I determine the information that I should use. And I call it tailor-made collaboration. You see, by communicating with the individuals that are going to be your participants and your workshop allows you to determine what information should be collected and utilized. You do that by having a, let's call it a survey that you send out to your participants and you ask them a few questions and then you ask them to ask you a few questions. And I think by putting those two things together, it allows you to come up with a fresh, exciting and new way of teaching, a new set of rules, a new educational path because every group of individuals, Toastmasters are going to be different. 
So I do believe that you should have structure because if you don't, you're just inter introducing mayhem. Determining what the people want, these Toastmasters, ex exceptional Toastmasters, what they want is what you're going to give them. Now, there's a plus plus for everyone. It's a plus for you, the trainer, because now you're not bored. You don't have the same old thing that you're teaching every time that you go in front of these people. It's different because you're collaborating with these individuals, which is, I think is extremely important. Yes, I think you do need to do a poll to find out exactly where the people that you're gonna be dealing with. You have people that may have been Toastmasters 10 years and they've been in this role five times versus individuals who are brand new. And uh, maybe some of them will be just like Kenji who were just thrust <laughs> into a position that they had no clue what was going on, but they said, okay, you know, I'll just go, I'll go along with it. So how do you handle, you know, these, you know, you have one extreme to the other. So how do you handle all of these people? And you do this by allowing the individuals in the room who are experienced to pass their knowledge to those that are not. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you have to become a facilitator and still you're having structure because you're determining exactly how much time and, and or effort that's going to be spent in, a, in order to accommodate those individuals who are new. And you're allowing the individuals who have the knowledge to pass it to them. You as the facilitator, are, remembers the fact that you have this structure and the content is going to be something that you're going to facilitate. Therefore, you're going to be the one asking questions and directing to make sure that into these individuals, the new club officers have an opportunity to, uh, uh, to grasp the knowledge in a specific amount of time. Now, uh, Kenji talked about, I think it was Kenji talked about the fact of having, you know, exchanging telephone numbers or email addresses. And this is where it comes to really comes into play because you're not going to have the time to spend going from A to Z on a particular topic or temp yes, a, temp a topic. You're not. So by having individuals to exchange their uh, email addresses, it allows them to now continue the conversation after the meeting is over. It is important now to talk about things other than basic club officer training, I think in the second round. So you wanna start talking about how do you handle problem Toastmasters or Toastmasters that are eager to learn, but they are so enthusiastic so they don't know that they're actually behaving as if they were a bull in the china closet. It's kind of important because you don't want to have any of your, the membership lost because the person, the officer who tried to engage this person, maybe uh, used a set of ideas that were not comfortable for the individual who was trying to exercise them against the person who was so eager. So I need to have time to talk about those kinds of things. Uh, talking about policies and procedures. There's a manual out there that talks about all of these things. So what do you have? What do you do when you have someone that's just not working out for the club? I'm sorry. They're just not working out. How do you go about asking them to leave? And there's a whole chapter 
in, in the policy and procedures manual that helps you or guides you through this type of information. Now, the, the best part about the things that I've talked about so far is that these things not only work within Toastmasters, but they also work outside of Toastmasters. So if you happen to be in a managerial position uh, at your place of employment, these things also can help you be the better uh, person at your uh, place of employment. One of the things that I found uh, while I was the district director and visiting over 60 clubs that year is that a, a lot of people either A, they don't have a clue or two, they don't bother reviewing their constitution or the addendum, I should say, to the Constitution. It's really important that they take the time and opportunity, have the opportunity to do just that. 99 times out of 100, I, they need to be updated. And the number one thing that I found out was the amount of money that they said they were supposed to collect for dues. They may be collecting, uh, let's say, $85 a year, but in, the, in their Constitution, it said 55 so these little things like that needs to be attended. And this is the perfect time to, to do this in the hopes that when by the time their year is over, that they're going to pass this information to the individual who is taking on their responsibility. Uh, performance reports are extremely important. Do you know that there is one uh, performance report that you can just show your membership and it really will help them get a, a clearer, a clear idea of what's going on. You can sit there and talk about some of the things that you want, like you want them to become distinguished. Um, I, I want you guys to come up with, we need educational points, but showing them a picture allows them to grasp the knowledge. It's like you you can tell them and you can show them. So you're, you're using two vehicles in order to communicate effectively this information. When they go back to their clubs, they're going to be able to show this because let's face it, round when round two, which we are now hits, this is it, folks. We are on, we're trying to now run to make and we want to make sure we have our our, our sneakers and our proper uh, wares so that we can make it to the finish line and be uh, distinguished. Giving pictures allows you to do that. Pointing them to the for, to Facebook, uh, we District sixty has several websites, one for each role, uh, from president to SAA. And they should, they should join. And we should suggest that they join, persuade them to join so that they are able to find other individuals of like minds to converse with, to talk about the things in, that, that's going on in their, in their clubs, from the joys to the things that maybe are not going too well. At least it's an avenue where they can use to communicate. And I think that that's truly the key is communication. Talk about award systems, either even within your club. You know, come up with, okay, you know, if, if, if we can, you can get 10 people to come to our meeting. The, the, uh, the first person who gets 10 people to come to the meeting, they will win a Toastmasters coffee mug. It really doesn't matter. It's just about the fact of having fun and, and some light uh, competition. I hope these things that I mentioned are, you would think are important as I do, because they are. And with that, I return control to Henley. Thank you, Elton, and thank you very much for sharing your insights. Now we're going to go into some of the questions in the chat box, as well as some of the some of the questions that I have to clarify 
uh, many of the points made during your presentation. So the first question is this. Uh, the first question is for Andrew. Andrew, can you show us how to add a video to the background? I can. Can everybody see my screen there? So when you go into, so at the bottom left hand, you see the mute and you see the stop video. And if you click on the arrow next to stop video, it, it talks about uh, virtual backgrounds. When you come into the virtual backgrounds, there's a plus sign here. And when you click on the plus sign, it gives you the option of putting in an add image or an add video. So you, you simply click add video and then you can choose a video to put in. Does, does that answer the question? I yes, Th thank you very, thank and, you very and, much. And, and I'll just add to that. So, if, so if some people sometimes people ask, well, how do you how do, how did I do the you know welcome to logistics? In PowerPoint, you can actually export and create a video. So you can take a PowerPoint slide, you can put some animation into it, you can then export into a video, and you can create a really quick video that way. Wow. And I'm just showing you, and, and I'm just showing you how to do that. So the export, create video, and this is all within PowerPoint itself. Well, wow, this is this this is excellent tips. Thank thank you very much. This is certainly something you, certainly something that I can use in my meetings. So thank you very much for that. So the next question is, so the next question is this. Um, sometimes if if you facilitate uh, a club officer training session, you may have attendees asking questions that are that are not related to the role being trained for. So how would you deal with that? Uh, so JD already provide like a partial answer. So JD already gave gave, gave in some thought in, uh, and and he said that it, it may be better to to kind of agree to deal with the questions outside of the training session. But uh, should should other panelists would like to add uh, would like to add their points, partic particularly Elton, because it's sort of related to content. I I I think when individuals or an individual or individual brings up questions that are outside of the scope of the workshop, I, I try very hard to at least take one of their questions, at least one, uh, only because I don't want them to feel shunned and, or, or pushed out of the meeting. I want them to stay with me and I'm gonna answer one of their questions and I'm gonna to try to pick the, I always ask to give me at least two questions and then I'll pick the easiest one, the fastest one that I can answer. I answer that and then I move on to saying, okay, so you have the rest of your questions we can talk about after the, after the, the workshop or arrange a time date when we can we can do that, but I do think it's important to at least answer one of their questions, as opposed to just pushing them uh, to the side. Thank you, Elton. Do other panelists would like to jump in? And, in, in, and Andrew, I, I have a I have a logistics answer to that, or logistics perspective to that. So prior to the training, it's important to send out a survey to the participants, so two three days beforehand, give them the opportunity to put together questions that they want to ask and hopefully on topics that you can then focus on. So that's given them an opportunity. And then when you do have your presentation itself, you know, show the questions that, that have come in so that they can see the fact that their question is within, you know, it's, it's gonna be addressed. And then mention that, you know, there may be some additional questions, but we're gonna go through these ones first. At the end, if we have time, we'll then open it up for additional questions. So it, it's really, you know, the planning and the preparation going into it making sure everybody feels included. Thank you, Andrew. And I believe JD had his hand up. Yeah, I was gonna say exactly why Kenji has the agenda on there. When you have an agenda, it allows you to stick to that. It gives it you clearance and runway to, to stick to that and say, it's not on the agenda, but we'll deal with it. Because it's not in the room, it's not to deal with that specific that you're talking about. It may be of importance, but we'll deal with it afterwards. Thank you, JD. Kenji, you have anything to add? Well, it sounds like JD had said mostly what I was going to say. Yeah, the agenda. The agenda is a key part of that. So you've you've sort of already planned. You're going to say that they shouldn't have an expectation of what is going to be said, and 
yeah, as Elton said, you have to be respectful and, and gentle about it, but you can point to the, the agenda's great backup to say, this is what we plan to cover. You can cover it after, you can cover it at the end if there's time. Yeah, it's just a matter of being flexible and respectful and working with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kenji. And thank you to all panelists for your thoughts. The next question is for JD. Are there any t general TMI resources on being a leader overall? For a lot of executive members, this may be their first ever leadership role, and they're not always prepared to be a club leader generally. Yeah. The club leadership handbook is the first and foremost. It's the Bible or whatever you want to call it. It is, it is the key to becoming a good executive officer and knowing what's in, involved in the role. Also, another key resource to go to is people who have done the roles in your club in the past. There is, I mean, because the, the, the books can say things, the resources are there, but if your club has its own little way of doing things, then you, you really do want to make sure that you keep that going. I mean, sometimes it's important to change things up. I mean, the club, if you're a struggling club, you know, and even corporate clubs, you know, they, they don't have a lot of information in there to deal with necessarily your specific corporation or whatnot, but there's a lot of key information from past experience and going to them, going to talking to other club members, getting in touch with other clubs, especially if you're a corporate club, go to other corporate clubs, find the ones that have been successful, go to them, ask what they do. Mm -hmm. Do other panelists have anything to add? If, if I can just mention very quickly, one project which is really, really helpful when it comes to leadership, you know, difference between leadership and management, for instance, is the High Performance Leadership Project. So in the traditional program, it used to be almost like a capstone project that you would have to do to get your DTM. Now it's simply a project within level five of many of the paths. And when you get that manual, it's amazing in terms of the richness of the information and, it, and what it delves into in terms of what it means to be a leader, you know, to have that vision, to have a plan, et cetera. So I would highly recommend getting your hands onto that project and onto that material because that really helps define what a leader is. Okay, thank, thank you everyone for your thoughts. So my next question is also for JD. So JD, during your presentation, you mentioned, uh, you know, sometimes a club may have more club officers than the standard seven. Right. You may, you know, each club can, you know, create their own special role, just like my club. So my club has like two other roles that are not part of the standard seven club officer roles and they should be encouraged and, and not only for the club officers, everyone, any Toastmasters should be encouraged to attend club officer training sessions if they are interested. So, the, so my question for you is how would you recommend, because the training sessions are only for one of the seven roles, how do you recommend which sessions uh, these, these club officers because they're not part of the seven to attend. Thank you. Very good question. The in our case where we have the club mentorship chair, it's a co-VP of education role. So we've had that club the club officer go to attend the VP of edu education training sessions, and that way they understand. I mean, it is slightly different. They understand the roles, and it's there. We've created a I've created a a guide like the that's similar to the the, the uh, handbook, uh, the club leadership handbook that says, here's what your role is. Here is some methodologies on how to do it. And every, in our club, I started a number of years ago and we have a handoff and everyone's supposed to have a little bit of a package. It's PDFs, it's whatever it is, physical properties that they hand over to the next. And there's a, and the last executive meeting is a dual executive meeting and the old one, the, the old guard hands over to the new guard and they do break, we do breakout rooms and say, here's what it is for your role. And then that way there's a warm handover. There's questions that can be asked and, and answered. And that's that, I call it a hand through. It's not a handoff, it's a hand through. And it's not just that you're, you're handing the baton, you're running, you're giving the baton, but you're running a little bit with the, the next in that role. Okay, thank you, JD. Do other panelists have anything to add to this particular question? Okay, thank you. So we're going to the next question. And this, and the next question, there's, there are sort there are two parts and they are sort of geared for uh, JD and Andrew. So JD, 
So this is the first half of the question. During your presentation, you showed us some really cool YouTube videos from Toastmasters International. Are there particular ones that you feel that are particularly suitable to be uh, played during a club officer session, training session? Not through the session because your time is limited. The VPPRs, there's a brand video that really helps you understand. It's more for the district level, but it's really good to understand what branding is all about and what you're supposed to do. Excellent guide for that. Uh, understanding what your role and what you're presenting and see what's available in that uh, online and see what's there. Be equipped beforehand to, uh, and then just provide the links to those resources to the members. I see. Thank you, JD. But you kind of broke my question for this. You kind of broke my broke my uh, second half of my question, which is for Andrew. So Andrew, let's say if I have a video that I want to play, and you and you also played a, a video during your presentation. How do I play the video in uh, in Zoom, but to ensure that the that the audio is still there for the audience? Uh, you're on mute. Thank you. When you click share screen, at the bottom left, there's an option that says share computer sound. So you have to make sure you click that as well. And if you click share computer sound, then any sound that you have in a video is gonna come through. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So those are, those are pretty much all the questions that I have. And now I, what we're going to do is that now we're going to open the floor up to the audience. If they have any questions for any of the panelists, now will be a great time to ask your questions. Yes, Iona. So I have a question and this is for Andrew. Uh, Andrew, you played the video behind yourself, uh, but if I do share screen, it'll come on the screen. I need it playing behind me. How do we do that? I know you have answered it, but... Yeah. So that was, that was the virtual background. So choose virtual background. So when you add the video into that, that library or that okay. directory, you can then choose it and then it just automatically starts playing behind you. Okay. But, but it was a PowerPoint slide, right? Yes. So, I, so I specifically got a PowerPoint and I put the words, you know, in, in a corner yeah. so that it would be seen if I'm in the center. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions from anyone else? Yeah, one more for JD. Okay, go ahead. So JD, what TI video would you recommend for club promotions? The, there's, a, let me, I don't know if I can quickly find it right now. There are, that's a video for the brand management and the, the, P, the PRMs. I don't have the direct link to it now. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the chat before we end up leaving. But it is the, we are, there's a lot of resources, fewer for other aspects, the, the president and whatnot. There are a couple there that are handy and maybe not necessarily directly, but they have the information that'll be key. But for VPPR to understanding how to utilize their brand, how to, how, the, the colors, the how to represent Toastmasters itself is very important, especially when you're trying to promote out, outside the club and our open houses right now and everything else that are going on. Uh, there is a better, there's a really great one for that in, within the, on YouTube. But again, getting on, knowing what's there, going, checking it out, and you there you get lost just because there's so much really great content there. And I recommend just going and checking out all of it, whatever you can. Okay, thank you, Ilona, for your question. Any panelists would like to add to uh, JD's answers? Okay, if not, I do have... I always have extra questions to ask around, but any, but before I do that, anyone else has any questions to ask the panelists? No, okay. Can I, can I, can I share something? Uh, sure. Because, and JD, you know, went to the District 60 website. I think it's a really important that any training include the D60 website. And Carrie mentioned as well, I mean, under Pathways, Tony Nelson has done a fabulous job in creating all of these different sub items. And the information that's available to, to us is, is phenomenal now. So if I go to help for members, for instance, I mean, JD had mentioned, you know, there's, there's various uh, reference guides and he put one into the chat box itself. But I mean, there's a really interesting catalog here. So I mean, if I click on the catalog, you know, this comes up and it's got the pathways, it's got all the, all the, you know, the 11 different paths. 
uh, there's a page per path and it shows you, you know, what you have to do for all the different levels. It's got the electives, it's got the mandatory projects. You, you go down, you know, further down, it's then got a page on every single project itself. So, I mean, the, the, the depth of information that's available here is, is just phenomenal. Uh, so, I mean, I think, I think the District 60 website should be part of any training, even under quality clubs. I mean, we have a, online meetings uh, tips, we have, you know, something brand new um, that, that Chris has, has brought up. It's, you know, beyond moments of truth. It's a mystery guest. This is where you can sign up and you can, um, you know, the PQDs will send somebody in. You won't know the, that they're actually working with them, but they'll report back on how your meeting went, you know, how, wel how welcome they were, uh, you know, how well was the meeting organized. So there's some fabulous resources available here. Uh, JD had mentioned the graphic. If you scroll down here, you actually get into a Toastmasters infographic. And if I click here, up comes the one that he was showing us before. So please, you know, do, do have the website as part of your training because there's an extraordinary amount of information here. And there's always new information being added. So under resources, for instance, I mean, the, the open houses is going to you know, be revamped shortly. And there's going to be some fantastic information there because we do open houses throughout the year. Yes, we're concentrating in October, but you know, we should be having two or three. And, and again, just the wealth of information that's now available on this website. Great. Thank you, Andrew, for your uh, information and for everyone's information. Uh, the One of the documents that Andrew showed with all the projects and, and paths and so on, that's all also include that particular document is also included in our Google Drive link for this particular session. So you will be able to find that document under that link as well. Okay, so I do have a question uh, more, it's, it's more geared toward Kenji, but I think all the panelists should, should, should be free to, uh, to, uh, to add to the answer as well. And it is this, as we have mentioned during this session, we lost about 25% uh, of the members and 15% of the clubs. So right now, every club is going to be, uh, you know, smaller than, than, than they, they would be normally. And we have like memberships loss and so on. So I, I would imagine during a club officer training session, most of the frequently asked questions will tend to be ab ab about uh, rebuilding the club, rebuilding the membership and also running quality meetings. So what are the sub, what are some of the resources, advice, tips that you can, that you can uh, offer to the club officers who ask these sort of questions? Mm, yeah, thanks, Hinlan. I think that is something that would definitely come up in a scenario question, and if, whether we put it in, whether you put it in the agenda or not. It's yes, it's a common experience. Even, even before we went to online meetings, a lot of clubs would experience that. Um, some of the, some of the things I might have heard, things you can cover in in like a presentation, would be things like the moments of truth, um, making sure that you, you're that you as an officer are in touch with what with why your members are there and what what they hope to get out of it, and. I think the key thing is as a club and as an officer you're in charge of this is making sure that it provides value for the members so that, so that they can see that they're getting something out of it and the guests can see that the members are getting something out of it and they can see what what's there one of the things i think is a key responsibility and again i try to include this in all of my agendas is that every officer is in, actually every member is is responsible for making for welcoming guests making them feel welcome and giving a good impression of the club. And that doesn't change if there's seven members or if they're present or if there's 20 present. Um, it's, a, it's a bit different, it's a bit harder with Zoom. And I think one of the things we've found is you can't really have side conversations the same way. But one of my clubs ha has at the beginning of our meeting, we have um, a success stories set, uh, session where we go around the table and ask, is there something successful? that's happened to you, preferably Toastmasters related, but it doesn't have to be. So you could talk about like a meeting that went well at work or something good you got done around the house. And so there's a lot, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different ideas. And I think leaving room for some of the more experienced members, other, yeah, if you've, if you've been around a club long enough, you've probably experienced it. There's a period of time when membership would have gone down and you've had to build it back up. So there's many different ways of doing it. Thank you, Kenji. What about the other panelists? Do you have anything to add to this particular question? Elton? 
you on mute. I think I think most clubs who have open houses uh, use some um, easy speak or uh, free toast host is another one. They do collect information, and that information happens to be, you know, individuals' first, last names, and email addresses. Why not gather those? and send out invitations. <clears throat> perfect thing, uh, one of the perfect things I think could be sent out would be say, like the club's newsletter. Let them know what's going on in the club. And the club should project that they're having uh, fun, it's uh, educational, and that they're wanting individuals to uh, return that maybe have not joined Toastmasters. I, I think that's a, one of the things that uh, a lot of clubs uh, overlook is the fact that they do have resources and those resources happens to be right at their fingertips that they can use to ask individuals to come back or as a, uh, an ex, well, not an ex, but a former district governor would say, just, just touching base If I can add to that, having uh, clubs create the, the newsletters and podcasts and those types of things, it's more than just a PR role thing. Getting other members involved in posting to those social media, getting members involved in these things gives them something different to do. So it keeps the interest up. It gives them an opportunity to become a bit more of an expert uh, online and visibly than they were just in, inside the club parameters. So getting more members involved in these things makes it more effective for everybody, for keeping keeping members there, getting more members that wanting to do, you know be a part of something bigger and potentially the next executive officer. Because the other thing you need to say at club officer round two is, by the way, in X number of months, we have elections. Make sure you've got think of somebody who's going to replace you. Think of somebody who you want to tap on the shoulder to ask to say, "Hey, how would you like to do this role?" Because if other people aren't there to do it, it's gonna it could end up being you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, JD, for your answer. And I just want to and and I do have something to add to JD's answer. Uh, if if there's a promotional opportunity for creating a newsletter or a blog. Just so everyone knows, there is a there is a project in I believe in level four that allow you to create a blog. So you can actually have the members create some blog posts related to the club, and that can contribute to that particular effort. And if I remember correctly, our Zoom master uh, Chris has actually done something similar, I believe, if I remember correctly. And I'm sure she can share insights on that if need be. I do. I actually created a blog as a level four project, but for me, it was a terrific incentive because I had wanted to do something like that for a while. And having the project to do was a good way for me to discipline myself, to get going on it, to do it consistently, which is a requirement of the project. And it's something I've maintained for another five months since I finished that project, partly just because I'm having fun. And if you wanna see the blog, just put a note in the chat and I can drop a link there for you. There's also another project in level four, though, that ties in well to what Hin Loon was saying, and that would be developing a social media presence. That's something that could tie into the VPPR role or to any number of supporting areas there. Wow, thank you very much. All right. Um, oh, Elton, you want to, you have something to add? Yes, uh, br uh, very brief. Uh, I, I want to go back to something that JD had, had, had mentioned, and it's, an, it's important that uh, members, every member in your club have a purpose. We had an individual in our club, or we still do, and he was, well, he is our SAA, but because the SAA basically at this point, they really don't do much, uh, he began to stop going to, going to the meetings. And I'm thinking, now, how can we get this guy back? And it was, so, it was standing right in front of me. I talked to him and told him that we would like for him to be our Zoom manager. And since then, he has been extremely active in the club, including at every club exec meeting, 
He always gives us a short tutorial, something that he's found new and different within uh, Zoom that he thinks would be beneficial for the club. So I think it's important that individuals have to be able to, uh, if you, you have to direct individuals so that they find purpose within the group so that they're actively participating, investing uh, in, the, in their clubs. Okay, thank you, Elton. We do have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, our next question is this. Can you provide some more information on how you would facilitate an open discussion? Since, of course, we're talking about round two, there will likely be open discussions. Sure, I guess I, I, can, I, can, take, I can take a stab at that one. And I think it, it comes down to kind of listening, but directing, similar to what Ken Lund is doing as the moderator. Um, you, you can ask or invite contributions from, from an experienced member. They can share their story. And as the trainer, you act as the facilitator. It's basically, this, this is what their story is. Is there something to share? Do you have questions? And you sort of control the back and forth of information that way. That way you can keep things sort of focused on topic and on time, but allow the questions of your participants as well as their contributions to shine through. Okay, thank you, Kenji. Oh, oh thank you, Kenji. Okay, our next question is this. Do you, like, what are your recommendations on the structure and content? You know, in, you know, are you going to recommend any, any changes on the structure and the content between round one and round two? Uh, on the um, on on a, does uh, does your recommendation on the structure and content on round one versus round two change with smaller and more administrative roles? Um, I think in general the same principles apply. The people coming in, a lot of them will have been doing this role for six or so months. Again, and there's also the possibility of people coming in, so you still have to balance sort of the fundamentals and the open discussion, but I think there is a lot more time you can devote to lessons learned. And that applies to other things. I've been a, I was a treasurer once before, and I think halfway through doing the training, there's stories you can share or scenarios about collecting dues, encouraging people to collect dues, and the, the lessons you've learned from there. And so, yeah, the same the content will be different, but the same principles apply in terms of structuring your training session and having a balance of sort of, yeah, fundamentals that you present versus the open discussion and scenario questions you consider. Elton, do you have anything to add to that? Since this has to do with content as well. Uh, I, I agree with what uh, Kenji uh, just, just mentioned. Uh, again, I, I, I think that it is important to listen more than talking. I, I find that, and, and this is my personal experience, when you talk too much, you find that you're getting in the way. Because then all of a sudden, what, the information that was flowing back and forth, you now are standing in the middle, at least I, I, I discovered that. So I find less is, is more. Content is crucial. I find that letting them determine on the questions that I receive from them allows me to determine what they want and to find ways of, of giving it to them, whether it's through another participant or through me or finding the information on the District 60 website or the Toastmasters International website or the CLH manual, whatever it takes in order to give them what, what they want and still be able to provide structure. Okay, thank you, Elton. Are there any more questions from the audience? Okay, if there are no more questions from the audience, I, I, I do want to close the session with just one more question because, oh, Arthur. Okay, okay, so he's, he, he's clapping. So my question is this, because a certain presidential candidate doesn't like the hardball question, so I am going to ask all of you a softball question just to finish off this session. And my question is this, what do you think is the most important for a successful training session? And you have one minute each. Uh, Andrew? It has to be fun, 
has to be informative and it has to be structured. So it's really important that you be very clear at the beginning in terms of what's gonna be happening. It's very important that you have fun throughout and that the information is flowing. And at the end, it's very important to make sure that you, you know, follow up, you provide the handouts that you said that you're going to provide your email so they can contact you afterwards and just be, make, make yourself available. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Kenji. Okay. Thank you, Hinlun. I would say the important thing is to be adaptable. And that involves listening, that involves flexibility, that it does involve planning because it involves planning for, for what you are going to say or what you're going to leave open to discussion. It also means having content to fill that if your participants are a bit shy or don't have those things to share. So there's a lot of adaptability and some of that comes with experience and some of it comes with planning. I, I think that pretty much covers it. Okay, thank you, Kenji. JD? Great answers already. I don't know where to go from there, but make sure you respond to, get information from the participants. Make them participants. Don't just have them sitting there with their cameras off and it's not a shot. Just saying, get them involved. Get them, it's about them. Make it about them. Make it about what they need to be successful in the second half. Their, their success is the club success, which is the district success, which is ultimately our member success. So make it about them, make it about what they can, what they need to be the best they can beyond. Okay, thank you, JD. Elton? Uh, I think collaboration, self uh, group investment, <clears throat> is really, really important in order to create that uh, synergy for, su for success. If you don't have that investment, they're going to be looking up at the ceiling and counting the number of dots in, in, uh, up there, and they're not going to be fully engaged in the presentation. The other thing too, is that you as the facilitator, you have to be fired up when you walk into the room. I've had experiences where the individuals in the room, they don't want to talk. I ask questions and they sit there. Well, I don't know about how you guys handle it, but I just finally just say, okay, you know, I'm not I'm talking to you. Please talk to me and to make them get to respond. And it usually takes the first question that they respond to. And then after that, they're okay. But do not allow them to become dormant or think that they can, as long as they sit there for an hour, they can just they'll get the, the credit and then leave. We, we, we don't want that. We want them to walk away with something they can take back to their club that's going to help their club uh, succeed. Thank you very much, Elton, for your, for your insights. Before I finish off today's session, I do have an announcement from the district. So for everyone's information, the nominations for district leader positions are open. And that District 60 and 123 are both seeking qualified candidates to serve in a number of elected and appointed leadership roles from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Yes, we are already thinking about that now. So for more information, please visit the District 60 website at toastmasters60.com. And for everyone's information, uh, because of the district realignment next year, this, the new District 60 will be the existing uh, District 60, everything below, uh, everything south of Lawrence Avenue. But everything north of L Lawrence Avenue, they'll be part of the new, newly created District 123. Okay. And Hindlund, so if I can just add to that. Yeah. So if I share my screen really quickly, you'll see right here is the, where the information is. So District Leadership Nominations. It's all very succinct. It's here. You click here, you read more, and then you go to a nice page that's going to give you even more information and everything that you need to know about that. Yep. Thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, so in closing, we have all learned a lot from today's session on the logistics, structure, resources, and content of an effective club officer training session. I would like to offer my sincere thanks to my panelists, Andrew, Kenji, JD, and Elton. I'd also like to thank our program quality director, Chris Nelson, for serving as Zoom master and timer today. 
Most importantly, I want to thank you for your attendance and your commitment to ensure our club officers receive the best training possible. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the weekend. And we're right at 3.30. Uh, and Chris has a poll. Chris has a poll to launch if you if, yeah. if can so I'm just going to hand the control to you, Chris. All right, the poll is out there. And while you're doing the poll, let's give a really big round of applause to these guys. I can't tell you the amount of time that they have spent between session one and session two of the Train the Trainer sessions. We have gained so much from their expertise, their time, their experience. Thank you all so much for your willingness, for your knowledge, and for the ability to share that so effectively and to address questions from our panelists. If you haven't had a chance to check out the District 60 website, Andrew Mertens is our webmaster. He's done an amazing job putting information there and helping all of our team to make sure that what we want to convey to the members is readily available. And while we're on the topic of that website, isn't that mystery guest a great idea? If you know a club that would really like to know what those outside guests really think, get them to sign up for the Mystery Guest Program, and we'd love to get someone anonymous there to give you feedback. Credit for that idea goes to J.D. Thomas, who mentioned it to me a couple of months ago. It's a fabulous idea, and I hope we're able to really help our clubs through it. Thank you all for being here. Please feel free to stick around for a short while to chat, and panelists, as usual, if you'll stick around, that would be great.